Welcome everyone to Ladies of the Kitchen 30 Minute Chat. I am Maria DeRosa. I'm the founder and proud CEO of this creation that I have literally done in my second chapter, where I bring um, interesting people, sometimes some places, but usually interesting people into the interview. And what I like to do is have them actually exemplify, verify what I do, which is I like to heal through the art of cooking and assist others to heal that way too with the art of cooking. And so a lot of my people and this wonderful lady, Gail, um, and I'm going to have her pronounce her name because she does it. I don't know. Her voice is so cool. So I'm going to, can you give us your full name, Gail? You say sure. it. it's Gail Stryer Herman. Doesn't she say it so cool? And that is one of the things I love about her. She not only speaks eloquently, but she walks the talk that way. So we met through a health and wellness company. And so that's why our food connection is very special. But the three things that I, I always have the number three, the three things that really touch me about Gail, and then we're going to get into our interview is number one, she is like me believes in constantly upping your knowledge and things about education and children. And so her specialty became a clinical uh, child psychologist. That was her like little field of entry into the uh, educational field. And I'm a former teacher. So again, we were connected there. The second thing is we're both moms. And we both have had many challenges uh, with that because we have another similar path that kind of crossed that mom and other things that were going on, which is divorce. Um, so that brought us together. And then the third thing I love about this woman is that she is also a health coach and runner. And so am I. So what can I say? We're like connected at the hip. I know you're going to love um, Gail. So welcome, Gail. Thank you, Maria. Thank you for inviting me today. So let's start off with, I'm sure people say, you don't wake up as a kid and say, I'm going to be a clinical psychologist and oh yeah, and I'll have my specialty here. I mean, how did that evolve and how did that enter your world? Great question. So actually as a kid, I have two, I'm one of three siblings and my youngest brother had some speech and language issues and some learning challenges growing up. And when he was little, it was hard for him, for others to understand him, but I understood him and used to translate when he was really little. And growing up, I watched as my parents, particularly my mother, provided the kind of educational resources for him. So we had a yeah. tutor came every week who worked with him um, so that he could really show all of the beautiful qualities that he had within himself, but he needed to express in different ways or learn in different ways. So I grew up with this beautiful model of what it can look like when you really see kids for who they are, when you give them the support that they deserve so that they can thrive. Um, that was my first experience really wow. passively with education. And growing up, I... I assisted in dance classes. I was a soccer coach. I was a camp counselor. I'm very much a counselor, a, a camper at heart. And I always loved working with children. So I knew that the, I was going to choose something that, that had me working with kids, whether it was like a teacher like you, or I found my way to psychology because I just found that people had a way of sitting and sharing with me and that I had a gift of helping people um, feel heard and seen and understood. And it just, it felt like a very natural fit once yeah. I continued on an educational path and with things that just brought me joy. So recently you had um, quite a few challenges in mm -hmm. your life. And one of those challenges um, included a move. Yes. And, you know, anyone who's ever moved in their life, whether it's from their tiny roommate college, you know, duo of two or four, whatever it is, 
or an apartment or whatever, it's a big deal. Yeah. So when you were going through this, I'm sure you had collected at this time, because you mentioned you're, you know, you are mother of two, all these things, right? Things, m little memories, books, uh, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. How did you decide no matter what, these two things are coming with me, no matter what, and what were they? Oh, wow. Um, so I definitely have way more than just these two things. Um, I guess when, when I chose um, divorce and we sold our house, I took a time and I spent time living at my parents' house, which was like a mile down the road. Mm -hmm. And there were things I got rid of. There were things I brought with me. Um, it ended up being the biggest blessing because it happened um, like just going into COVID. So that was my COVID pod. And so to me, like my silver lining is that I had that time with my parents and one of my boys living with us just before my father passed away. So really the biggest, like the thing that I, I there are all of these things that I brought. And then as I moved to Pennsylvania, I realized I, I don't need half of them. Um, but I did save a lot of things for my kids because I, I really wanted them to be able to decide what was important to them and make those choices of, of what to bring forward, but it's definitely way more than two things that came with me. <laughs> so things of memories of the kids, you know, whether it was things they had written or awards. Oh my gosh. Like that, um, right? well, I mean, even on my shelf, there are uh -huh. pictures of when they were little and they're 23 and 25 right now. Um, so they're not little boys. They're, they're grown and young men. Um, but I, I definitely have boxes where when I unbox them, they're just these beautiful, whether it's a handprint that they made in preschool or a Mother's Day card that they made for me, or in some cases, something that they that they created for school where um, glimpses of their younger selves are there. And I hope that they are then examples for them of who they were and who they're, you know, continue to become. I love that. Um, I know that part of your healing has really been tied to not only working on this mm -hmm. and your heart, yes. but also on your body. And I know that you've put a lot of effort into a health journey that keeps evolving. Why don't you draw us a little picture overall, how it started and where you are today? Because it's always evolving, just like us, I'm sure. Sure. So um, growing up, I was athletic. I played soccer. I danced. I played tennis. And then life happens, right? And I became a mother of two boys. And the most activity I was doing at that point was driving my kids to their activities. <laughs> Somewhere along the way, I realized it was really important for me to do something for myself. And I saw... Um, high school friend post a picture from um, a Spartan race that he had done and he was climbing in the mud. And I thought, I want to get dirty. I want to climb over things. How do I do that? And my friend Danny said to me, well, there's running involved. I'm like, well, I'm not doing that. I don't really like running. But with him, I, I was introduced to running um, first, and it really was walking until I could eventually run a mile until I could sustain that and do a 5k and eventually went on to run half marathons and 10 marathons, which blows me away because that was never a bucket list issue, a bucket list item for me. Once I ran the first one, I definitely found that I learned that I had so much more strength and physically what I was capable of. And it was really important for me to start taking care of my body in a different way. I was running, but I needed, I needed health and nutrition, the food parts, right. Mm -hmm. That connect us and how we were both introduced to a health and wellness company. I, I got amazing results, um, which weren't so much more than a weight loss journey. It was really about body image and self-confidence, my relationship with food, um, right. Not as just comfort, but as something to nourish my body that I then sort of felt called to share with other people, because if I felt this good, I wanted other people 
especially women, to have the same opportunity for themselves. So and you're still doing that and you're doing So I am, work. yeah, I am still doing still doing that and it's been a journey in the last 2 years I've had some health challenges and autoimmune issues that have required that I've made very intentional deliberate shifts so that I look really look at the things that I'm putting in my body and seeing what serves my joint health, my energy, my immune system. I, I mean, I had been doing that. I just, our bodies, you're change, more intentional. So right? our, yeah. well, our bodies, our bodies change over time and what my body needs now compared to what it needed nine years ago are, are different things. So it, it led me to look into an autoimmune protocol that took out different kinds of inflammatory foods. Um, and while some people would look and say, oh, well, there's so many things you can't eat. I choose to look at it as what can I choose that makes my body healthy and happy and vibrant and energized. And feel that, good. And, so and, what is your favorite food then now? Do you have a favorite like go-to? <laughs> my favorite food? Um, I, I get to choose lots of things. Um, uh -huh. I, I, I have said to people, I am going to turn into a sweet potato. And one day you may like, we may doing to be doing the zoom and I'm going to be orange because I've eaten so many sweet potatoes because it's the carb that works for me right now. Um, and so, you know, I'll, I'll do them lots of different ways. I constantly have sweet potatoes and it's an odd food choice, no, but, but you can do anything. You can make muffins and yes. rides, all sorts of different things. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's, I love it. So, um, what, was your very first job ever like paying job? And did that help you in any way with the whole route in the psychology and working with children? Um, my first paying job was as a babysitter for the two little girls who lived across the street from us. And they weren't so little. I, I want to say they were two and four years younger than I was, but I was just old enough to be able to babysit for for them. Um, so yeah, I mean, I start, my first thing was I was working with, with kids. kids. Yeah. So there you go. There's there the beginning. You go. Right. Oh, wow. So what, um, what do you think you've learned as far as this career that is so, and this path with education that is so priceless to you? Um, so my, my degree, I have a doctorate in school child clinical psychology, which means that some of my work has been in schools and some of it has to do with more clinical psychology as well, but focus on kids mm -hmm. um, and with kids, like kids just don't show up by themselves. They come with parents and siblings and families and I think it's really important to think about a whole child and the context. Like none of us just show up with one with one part of us. It's our whole selves. So really thinking about how to think about the whole child and in the context of their family and their school and all the things that are going on. Um, how to think about kids and their strengths rather than us only focusing on what's not working, right? Because if you found your way to me as the psychologist, chances are something isn't going the way it either should or you would like it to. And, you know, you're looking for- Bothering you. <laughs> right? You're looking for solutions for it to be better. And we can keep concentrating. And, and this is really important, even for the littlest kids who we're speaking with about- what's the matter or how, how we can shift our mindset and make it better. So, you know, even with my little ones, I would talk about shifting perspective, whether I was taking out a kaleidoscope, right. And showing them if they shifted it just a fraction of an inch, right. You didn't have to change your whole self, but just by changing things a little bit, we change our perspective and the way we look at things. And I think that that those are lessons for us as adults to, to share with kids and to experience for ourselves, but it's, they're also lessons that we can teach the kids. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Now, um, what would you say? I, you know, um, I know anybody that is continuously learning new things about themselves always is grabbing new knowledge, whether it's something they Googled, 
But most people still like us, like a good old book, you know, that written word. Is yeah. there a particular one that you're reading right now that's kind of interesting and fascinating to you? So I, I do a lot of reading about personal development, right, and personal growth. Recently, I've actually wanted to pick up fiction, um, oh. which I haven't in a while. Um, and um, the last thing I read um, was Matt Haig's How to Stop Time, which is uh, which is about someone who really doesn't grow old and has this like long perspective of what life and history looks like and relationships over time. Um, wow. So I, like I've enjoyed that and a lot of historical fiction. Um, but I guess the the personal development that I've been listening to a lot lately has to do with Dr. Joe Dispenza, whose work I I love. And for me has really resonated as I've been on this like health and healing journey that the thoughts we think have the power to shape our, our present and our future health, right? That we, we think them over and over and over again, and that those neurons just wire together with those thoughts that we really have to be intentional and right. change them. So yeah. when I lay there for acupuncture, I really think about like <laughs> healing my body nerve by nerve, cell by cell and partnering um, in some of the ways that he talks about. So I've, I've been listening to some of his podcasts and, um, you know, and his books lately. Yeah. He has some great little shorts too, that he does on yeah. YouTube. But I like his YouTube shorts a lot. Yeah. They're because his voice or something also in his voice. It just really yeah, the meditations. Yeah. Just for so me before bed, I will sometimes put those on. Um, because I definitely believe that subconsciously, those are the things, you know, the, the last things that we think about before we go to bed, you know, right. they enter our, our bodies and our minds and our thinking. And I want sleep to be restful, restorative healing. I know it's a really important part of, of my health journey. Um, and it really is for, for everybody. Um, so the things that I put into my head before bed are really important. What are you working on right now, specifically either personally or professionally, or maybe they're both different or are they similar? Gosh. Um, lots of different things. So, you know, you mentioned that I moved two years ago, um, which was a big deal for me. Um, I left a job. I had been at a school-based job for eight years. Um, and I knew that it personally and professionally, you know, I had moved beyond that. Um, and then also I moved for next love and life chapters with this amazing man in my life. And you and I connect a lot about next life chapters and the things that um, if we allow them to happen, that there's so much more for us, right? That life continues to expand and grow in this beautiful, abundant way. So on a personal level, um, relationship has been a beautiful growth point. Um, I don't want to call it a point because it's like a uh, garden. Yeah. Yeah. I've been doing a lot of planting lately and really enjoying gardening. So, and we garden together. So a beautiful garden that we continue to plant and plant seeds and watch that flourish. Um, so on a, on a personal level, that's part of it. Um, and, you know, in coming someplace new, I literally came knowing no one except for Reed. And I trusted in myself and the fact that I love community. I love people. I love connecting that I would find my people and my tribe. And I have in very many ways. And I continue to do that to grow, to grow those connections, whether it's at the yoga studio or my multi-sport group or um, just different women's groups and networking and so forth. So that's um, also something that I'm, I'm looking to do is continue to create opportunities because I know I'm not alone, whether you've moved, like people think at a certain age, you stop making friends, but there's, we always keep growing. And I love that you said that up. because yeah. um, the way you did it and the way I did it, we have a lot of similarities and yet our, our unique differences. So like you, 
I had this great man. We moved to a new place. I don't know anyone. And people said, well, how did you, how did you make that transition? And you just do little baby steps, you know, um, at least that's how it was for me. What would you say your, your biggest baby step was in order to just start making that new friendship, new community, new network? Uh, I actually was really intentional about it. I knew that it was important, right? I, I love him and I love me. And it was really important to fill my cup, which meant having relationships with other women, right? In my world and building those friendships. So um, before I came, I looked, I Googled for the different things that I, like I was interested in, yoga and multi-sport and running and found Facebook groups and joined them. And I like, I, I was discriminating because I just wasn't looking to meet anybody. I was looking for high vibing, smart, energetic, go out and live life kind of women. And so that's, that's what I put my intention out to find. And I have found that like, over I love and that. that's again. the best so, advice you can give anybody. Listening. Oh gosh, I, I joined be this intentional and do it and, and yes. you know, love yourself you in the process. You have to like, be brave about it. Right. Because it's easy to go back to, oh my gosh, like I'm, I, I don't have, who are, who am I to ask to join this group? Well, somebody's like waiting for your energy and for you, for you to show up. So I found this amazing multi-sport group that is so much more than sport. It is women who support each other, you know, in all of their journeys and all their iterations, uh, you know, can ask any questions and, you know, we get together for movie night and, and fun and fundraising things as well, or volunteer efforts, but there are just so many different places and ways to connect when we allow ourselves to, so, do, that. to do that. You just have to take yourself like, you know, and go do yeah. it and go do it. And, you know, yeah. get messy and don't get all crazy about what's going to happen. And before you know it, it's just a great, do you have um, any particular person or um, entity that you look up to that kind of just always inspires you? Ooh, um, great question. An entity that I look up to. I mean, I definitely believe that there is, you know, a higher power than us, right. In terms of like trusting in God and the, un and the universe, like to be there and have our back. Right. Um, you know, when I think of who I look to in the world most as my, as my guiding people, it would definitely be my parents. Um, my mom right. who I'm really blessed to, you know, be very, very close with um, in my life and my father, who I was very close with, who passed a couple of years ago, both who have just taught me immeasurable lessons about how to show up in the world and what's important and family, um, how to contribute and give back. Both of them did that in, in different ways. Um, that's wonderful. Like leave a mark but and legacy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, if someone was sitting here with you, yeah, as you and I did at one point, and they're just coming out of a relationship that has not been fun and easy, and they're getting ready to move on to their next chapter, and their children are looking at you, what's going to happen with you, mom, and concerned and loving, what would you tell that woman now? All right, I'll take a deep breath, oh, which is probably what I would tell, I would tell any woman to do is first, before you respond and react, is to focus on your body and to, to settle yourself. It's all going to be okay. And that we each, we each get to live our own lives, like as, as women, as mothers, like you know, as partners is that you get to choose for yourself. And sometimes your kids will like your choices and sometimes they won't, but you still get to choose and live the life that you choose. Um, you know, and, and I said to my kids, I'm like, sometimes like, you're going to choose things I, that I wouldn't choose 
or that I might not agree with. And I will love you anyway. I will always love you. Um, and hopefully, you know, they learn to be happy for themselves to understand change and to appreciate that we all are doing the best that we can. And we're all looking, right? We're not perfect. We don't always make the, say it the right way or make the right choices. Um, but that we get to choose for, we get to choose us. And that's really important. We get to, and, and to own that. It's very easy. I, I mean, I'll say it was very easy to get caught up in a sense of, of guilt, you know, surrounding choices, shame or, or shame or, you know, protectiveness and, and we need to trust and share. We need to trust and share. Because it's amazing. And we both have learned how much, if we don't do that, how much the body says you better do oh, it because I'm going to explode. Yes. <laughs> right? yes. yes. Yeah. We both had a physical and I think a lot of women don't realize how much their body's talking to them when you're going through changes. You kind of just, oh, well, look at it later. I probably just had too much wine last night or it was whatever we rationalize. And it's our body screaming to please, please address this. Don't hide it. Deal with it. Talk, reach out, all the different modalities that are available. But it takes that baby step of, of awareness and, and going, okay, I'll be all right. And breathe. Yeah. Like you said, I yeah. love that first thing. Cause that's one thing that's so easy and free and so many people don't do it. Right? So much though. There's a, there's a book and I, I can't think of the author called um, the body keeps the score. And it's re it's, it's, it's deep. It's a, like a, a powerful read, but it really talks about how we store all kinds of trauma, like big T trauma and little T trauma you know, even the small things, how our body, how it manifests in our body and how things like breath work and meditation, as you're saying, things that are readily available to each of us to help ourselves to heal um, and to really be our best. Yeah. And it's free throughout life. Yeah. It's, it's free. not like you have to be an expert at any of them. No. Sure. There's different ways of learning to breathe and different yoga modalities and different meditation, but you can develop what's great for yourself. Right. Absolutely. And Absolutely. That's, that's Absolutely. the beauty of how our body and our mind, it's like, we have everything we need right here is mm -hmm. just figuring out what our heart feels is the best for us. So, yeah. okay. We're going to end with this. Okay. What is your biggest joy in life and what's your biggest fear? And maybe you don't have a big fear and maybe you don't have a big joy, but my biggest joy and my biggest fear. Um wow, I gosh, um you have a lot of joys. I know that. I have a lot of joy. A lot of things um bring me joy. You mentioned planning the relationship. Your yeah, children, I mean, having your mom it. around. So I, I bet you got my it's... my biggest joy. But I'll give you some of some okay. of my joys. Yeah. Um, I guess all those superlatives sometimes um, I don't end up putting them in a hierarchy of of what's biggest, best, and yes. most yeah. because it, it. I think it sometimes depends on the moment. Um, but all of those things bring me joy. I mean having conversations like this bring mm -hmm. me joy. So yeah. you and I were talking before like that. I so appreciated that you trusted me and invited me to have a conversation. And there's such, for me, relationships bring joy, whether they are family, whether they're friends, sometimes it's somebody new that you just like had a conversation with in the supermarket, like having those exchanges and, um, having someone's best interest at heart and, and knowing that you can leave somebody better than you found them. Right. Like to yeah. me, that, that embodies joy that we can do that for each other. And I love that you had mentioned planning and doing it together with Reed, because it's like in the moment, you don't even have to be talking, but you're using all your senses. You're using all your energy. Energy is coming back to you and you're bonding and 
I compare that a lot when I do what I do, because I feel like that's what we do when we cook. Mm -hmm. We're doing it usually, not always. Some people, you know, cook by themselves, which is also a healing thing. But when you do it with just one or two more people, it's like you're you're talking, you're um, maybe sometimes not, but you're chopping, you're using all the different senses. And all I love that. You know, it's, it's amazing how you just have this sense of union and the energy is felt whether you're quiet or whether it's just the pan frying or whether it's just the dirt crumbling up, you know, when you're planting, it's just, I love it. Oh my gosh. I love how you describe that because I can, I can hear the pan sizzling. I can feel the energy of, you know, moving around the kitchen together and then of sharing a meal. And of, yeah, it, it's, just, it's just one of the most um, healing modalities. And I think our culture has lost a lot of that because we're always in such a rush, you know, what's convenient, what's easy. And we've, we've forgotten that that experience is such healing in itself, you know, and we have to fuel our body anyway. Right. So I love um, that you bring that gift to the world. Thank you. So everyone, we're going to end this up and I would love Gail to let her share with you because I know that there's people out there that are interested in health and she's a health coach. And I know there's people that have kids and she's not only worked with them, but she has two of her own. So where can people reach out and find you, Gail? And I'll be putting this in the notes. Below. Okay. Um, well, people can find me on social media on, um, on Facebook, on Instagram, even on LinkedIn, although I'm less active there, but that's a a goal for the coming year, Um, you know, or can get in touch with me and email directly. I am happy to like, you know, to be in touch with you directly and at um, dr.gailherman at gmail. Right there, the name's there and I'll put it down below. Thank you, Gail, so much for your time. Thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, We will see you in another month with another guest, but I hope you enjoyed our time together. And uh, in the words of Gail, breathe and make good choices. Bye everyone. Thanks, Gail. Thank you, Maria.